Hello, and welcome to App Lab Math. This is where we have students code simple and not so simple algorithms that are staples in the mathematics curriculum using a free online programming environment called App Lab from code.org. Let's get started. The first thing I encourage all my students to do is make sure they're signed into their Gmail account. I'm signed in already, that's me. And once they're signed in, they can go straight to code.org slash app lab. That'll bring them here. Uh, you can see that app lab, this programming environment is, is for all ages 13 plus. It works on all modern browsers, Chrome, Firefox, uh, uh, and Edge, and uh, works with JavaScript that goes in either blocks or text. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in, and I'm going to sign in with my Google account. That's what I encourage everybody to do, and you're going to get right to your dashboard. Uh, from there, you can go right to your projects, and for right now, our projects are spe specifically going to be in App Lab. So when you go there, it should take you to App Lab, and it should make a new project for you, Untitled Project. The first thing I have my students do is to rename that project to what they're going to be working on. In this case, our first one is going to be a units conversion uh, program. And we're actually going to, so we can call it units conversion. And then we can go ahead and click Save, and we now have a units conversion program. A little bit about this environment. You see that this is your output window. This is what your app will look like as it runs on the computer. It's also in the shape of a phone because that's how it will look when it is actually run on uh, students' phones uh, or anybody's phone. It will work on iOS and Android. Um, this is your toolbox. This is where all the uh, code blocks will come from. and those code blocks will be dragged right over to your workspace over here. All right, let's go ahead and get started. By default, this starts in the code tab, but actually, I'd like to start in the design tab and look at these items in your design toolbox. The first one we're going to want to take is a text area. We're going to drag that right over to the approximate middle of the screen. You can put it wherever you want it. Uh, this looks something appropriate right now. And then the first thing we need to do is to rename the text area from text area one to text area underscore results. Uh, the reason we uh, rename the ID is in case you have more than one text area later in the app, uh, it's easier to identify in your code. Uh, we're going to leave the text blank for now, and then we're going to bring in a button. I'm going to put a button right down here, right below our text field. I put it off to the side in case we add more buttons later. And instead of calling a button one, this of course will be for the ID button meters to feet. There we go. And then for the button text, we'll change that. This we can use uh, capital meters to feet. And then we might need to resize this button just a touch. So that it fits the words. And now we're ready to move on. I encourage students not to spend too long in the design phase because there's lots of great code that needs to be written here. And that's what we're going to go on to next. So we're going to go now to the code tab and start writing our function that's going to convert meters to feet. So we will start here in the green set of blocks called functions, and we're going to drag a my function with the parameter n. And the first thing we're going to do is change that name of that function to meters to feet. Notice how there's no spaces in there. Uh, and I did put capital T and capital F so that it makes it easier for us to read. But the key is you're not allowed to have any spaces when you create a function name. We'll leave the parameter as n, and then this function is going to return a specific value. So we're going to take return over. And now we need to actually do the math, the actual conversion. So we can look up it on Google, but I'm just going to say it's 3.28. Oops, sorry, that didn't get in there. 3.28 times n. That's how we convert meters to feet, is we take the number of meters, multiply by 3.28. And since there's 3.28 feet in every meter, this should actually convert the number of meters to feet. All right, now we need to trigger this computation 
when the button is clicked. We're going to do that by going to the UI controls and dragging over an on event block. We at this point need to change the ID to the button we called meters to feet. Leave click the same and now we need to tell what happens when the event uh, the button is clicked. For that we're actually going to go into the purple variables and we're going to prompt the user for a numerical value and store it. I encourage my students to change this variable name x, change it to meters because we're prompting for a number of meters we will be converting to feet and then at this stage we're going to need another variable we can choose this one here declaring a variable and assigning it we'll change that meter that variable name to feet and what's going to be in the blank here is that's where we're going to call our function meters to feet so you literally type meters to feet and then parentheses we're going to put meters in parentheses here so that's going to be meters to feet meters so now our feet variable will actually have the value of meters and what we need to do now is place then that output to our text area results. That's going to be in the UI controls and we need to choose the set text so that we can set the text of our text area and we'll change that ID of course to our text area results and then now here we need to be very careful what we put in here for text. So what I'm going to actually uh, encourage you to do now in this other box we're just going to type exactly what I have here feet oops, sorry feet plus quote space feet and then put our any quotes there and then if we click somewhere else that's going to make an orange bar there and it will output the number of feet here and it will output the word feet after it so uh, people will be able to see the units and literally in eight lines of code you've successfully created a units converter calculator. Let's see it run. Over here on the run, this is exciting, go ahead and click meters to feet. You'll get a prompt here to enter a value. Enter a value like a number of meters and all of a sudden we see 180.4 feet. That is awesome. Congratulations if you've got that working. Now I know what you're thinking. The first thing the students are going to say is, oh, Mr. Ruth, can we do something about that point three nine 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 nine. Computers um, many times are not very good at rounding. So uh, I'm going to give you a couple of quick optional tips here uh, to go, to go on um, to to show you the rounding and then also to add a quick picture. If you want to round the feet variable, you can choose a variable here, and then we're going to choose assigning the variable, and then basically we bring assigning the variable over, and we're going to change it and we're going to let feet here instead of x and then this is going to be exactly math math dot round that's round parentheses 10 times feet and then we're going to divide that by 10 again so let's go ahead if we reset this and run it again and try our meters to feet as 55 we get the pro we get an appropriate 184 180.4 feet here's another optional thing that might really allow the, the students to be creative and make their apps a little bit more personal would be to add an image so that's going to be back in our design tab this is also totally optional but you can add an image oh sorry about that add an image Sorry, I had to refresh my screen here. Everything is usually saved, uh, auto saved, less than a minute ago. Uh, what I'm going to do is dry and drag an image over here. Uh, we can put that on here. You can resize it to wherever you think is appropriate. I'm going to make it about the same size as my text area. Uh, you can put that on there. And then that's called image one. Um, and then basically if you just go to Google and find an image that you would want to put there the students can choose any appropriate image they want from Google uh, you look at that you can go look at those images copy that URL and head back now go back to the code design and 
in the on event, what we can do is right after we set the text to what the appropriate units are supposed to be, uh, in our UI controls, we can look for set image URL. Drag that in. Of course, the ID will be our image one. And then um, the entire URL will be what we copied from Google. Now, if we go to run our app and we click meters to feet and try a certain number of meters, it actually will grab that image from the web. So if they have some specific image that uh, shows something that's meters to feet, it can become really cool. And they can add literally as many buttons as they want here. It could scroll as many buttons to convert different units to do different images and output different things. Once they've done this, this is extremely scalable. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, happy coding.